This is Pastor Richard, and you are watching Anchored in Christ, a weekly vlog from St. Paul's Lutheran Church to know what we believe and why we believe it to be anchored in Christ's word for us. This week we're looking at Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34. It is a text where Jesus calls us to trust. It is a text where he gives us somewhat of a rebuke on not to worry. You see, when we think about worry, I don't know about you, but I know for myself that worry often rests right here on my shoulders or here in my gut. Worry has a way of, of stirring up our stomachs to give pressure on our scalps, over our eyebrows, even our stress points and restless legs. And oh man, it goes on and on and on. However, when it comes to worry, Jesus is understanding worry in a little bit different way here as he explains this here in this gospel reading. Let's read this and see exactly what he is referring to with worry. Verse 25, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, or about your body, or what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? In other words, what Jesus is saying here with this word worry, he says do not be anxious, do not have a divided mind. You see, what can happen is we can have a divided mind when we think about you know, what we are eating, what we are drinking, our body, and also what we will wear. And we can even add to the list about our finances, about our kids, about our retirement, about the economy, about our jobs, about COVID uh, virus. We can go on and on and on. There's so much out there that will take our mind and it will divide our mind, stretching our mind apart with all of these things, thus bringing about a great deal of anxiety and worry. And so Christ goes on to share here, and he points to a couple examples, such as the lilies of the field and the birds. And he says, you know, look at these birds. These birds, they don't have a divided mind, yet they still get their job done. They still go through their vocation as birds, collecting food and going throughout all the seasons, and yet they're not divided. And how much more are you more precious to the Lord than a simple lily or a bird? And will he not take care of you? And that is the reason why Christ says to us later on that verse in verse 32, uh, excuse me, verse 33, he says, but strive first or seek first after the kingdom of God. Yes, after the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. And so what Christ is really pointing to, do not let your mind be divided. Don't even start fixate on that one thing, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God that comes to you, that Christ is for you, that you're baptized into Christ, that his body and blood are for you, that his word is for you, that his forgiveness is for you, that you belong to him as a child of God, that you've been snatched out of darkness to light. You are in Christ. Fixate on that. Trust in that. Rest in that. Do not let your ideas and your thoughts and your mind be divided with all the worries of life. Fixate on that main thing, knowing that you belong to Christ and he will take care of you as you go throughout these vocations and situations in life. So indeed, it is on the one hand a bit of a rebuke, but at the same time, it is great gospel for us to fixate on that one thing, who we are in Christ, that kingdom of God that is for us. So as we contemplate this text for our children, as we contemplate this text for ourselves, we always remember that a divided mind, divided thoughts brings about anxiety. But for us as the Christian, remembering who we belong to, that one thing, to seek that kingdom, to remember who we are in Christ and not have that worry. So I hope this helps. And we'll catch you next time.